but for some reason the video keeps turning itself off I thought I was videoing again then and I was having a lovely conversation with a beautiful horse and none of it came out I didn't press the red button well I thought I did anyway I took a picture of the lovely horse it's lying down it's got a beautiful coat and I was just saying that I don't normally come through here when the horses are in here and the cows are in that field but today I am coming here this is one of the occasions where I do come through here and there looks to be cars parked up so well I do like to do this walk and quite often when I get to the gate there's a huge bog um, no I didn't go out dead early this morning um, it doesn't get dark to five-ish we've just gone five now so I can extend the, the time before I come out um, so uh, that's what I'm doing I'm videoing I think is, is it still working yeah that's twice now I thought it was videoing and I but I did check as well it's very strange so anyway there's a shed there and sometimes there are horses here there's somebody over there getting out but unfortunately I'm coming this way because I do get a bit embarrassed when I go that way but I always say to anyone I say oh look it's because I'm a bit nervous of the cows and the horses and they're usually all right now if we look through this fence here over at Middle Hope and everywhere you can see it's quite barren but look at all the dotted sheep they're probably all expecting now these sheep that are on the hill so those white dots well they're all sheep looks very young green doesn't it they're all sheep and they're back all um, winter lambs are due Where that? Oh, she's walking down there. Yes, yeah, so that was lucky because I would have bumped into her, you see. This is a nice walk, though. <sighs> Do you know what? I saw the doctor just after Christmas Day and uh, he prescribed me some medicine for my bad cold and my chest was rattling. It cured it. And you know what? From that day until this morning, I didn't have to use my inhalers so we're talking about nearly a month the treatment was so good and so fast and I could breathe again it was absolutely gorgeous but last night I got a feeling somewhere in the building or next door even they were on a big smoking session the police came around yesterday because they said there was a, a disturbance they then want to know if we knew anything, all the, every, all the residents. Well, I didn't hear anything. But uh, anyway, they were somebody was doing something, and of course, my my flat particularly it seems to draw in air, um, and I could smell it in my when I was lying down and I thought oh no it's too cold to have the window open but I would have done if it anyway I did go to sleep in the end but when I woke up this morning for the first time I actually felt a bit tight in the chest you know from the alveoli closing they were protecting me the reason they closed up last night was to protect me from the pollution that's why they do it in a way it's a good thing Anyway, I thought, I probably could have not bothered, but I thought, oh no, just take, just take your brown inhaler, Sheila, just for today, because you want to go for a walk. And I've been all right anyway, but I think I just did it as a precaution. <clears throat> yeah, so it is a worry when you live in drafty buildings and even though you don't smoke yourself, other people smoke. And if for some reason it just gets in your flat. I mean, everyone knows about pot and skunk and all that, how invasive they are. I mean, some of the shops in town, 
they have a problem if they have pot smoking tenants above them because what that means is uh, it's going to invade their shop I know a local charity shop recently got rid of some tenants that were skunk smokers because the charity shop really used to stink terrible of it so in the end I think they got rid of them it's so antisocial, isn't it? And it's so unhealthy. These young people ruining their lungs. I mean, okay, well, I've always been a bit understanding because I was a smoker once. I understand. I do understand, but the thing is, it took me a long time to really get it into my head, really, but um, how bad smoking is. I used to, but everyone knows it's bad, but you, it's a habit. You have to train the brain. You have to train your brain not to want it. Now, in my case, when I finally gave up and I haven't had a cigarette for 10 years now, not one, apart from having to inhale other people's smoke. But before I reached that 10 year start, there was about three or four years of training of the brain, um, which meant gradually reducing. I had to do it slowly. And what helped a lot, and it helped a lot of people, was when smoking was banned in pubs, public buildings, cafes, restaurants. When they banned it, and even when at work, they banned it from the hospital grounds. That helped a lot of people stop um, because you had to stop. You couldn't do it. Um, of course, then you've got loads of people smoking outside pubs, littering the pavement, you know. Um, but anyway, like I said, it took me four years. And the worst time for me was Christmas time. I've always found it a difficult time. My mother died on Boxing Day when I was 14. I've, it's, I don't keep going on about it, but it did, I'm sorry, it affected me all my life. And um, obviously I had children and we got on with Christmas. Um, so when Christmas came, I used to allow myself a couple of fags and cigars. We always had cigars. Anyway, basically what happened was if I weren't careful, I would be smoking a little bit after Christmas. So it took me a while. In the end, I had to say no smoking. Now that also helped, even building up to 2009 when I started to stop. In 2006, I was hardly smoking real. No, I think I was smoking quite a lot. So I had to sell my house. So there's a lot of trauma. Uh, there's a lot of trauma in 2006. So I was still sm heavy, heavy smoking then. But I was starting to get chesty all the time, coughing. Cough, cough, cough. And I knew, I knew I had to stop. So from 2006 to 2009 was the worst time for me. Because, um, you know, because I was a smoker and it was very, very difficult. Then from 2009 to 2013, which is in four years, I attacked more and more against it. Longer and longer and longer. Then when my lovely dog Brandy died, it's Zara's dog really, I don't know. I think sometimes her white coat was tinged with nicotine or something. And she died in our arms. At, and just after she died, I gave it up forever. And the catalyst for that was one of my daughters on her birthday in February, not long after Brandy died, she said she was giving up. So I said to her, right, I'm going to give up with you, and I mean it. I think she's lapsed since, of course. Um, but I didn't. 
So from February 2013, it's now 2023. I haven't smoked. I made, I just made myself do it. Um, I always used to say I love the drag on the fag with a cup of tea. Now, I don't have that feeling anymore. Now, what was, what was also weird, not long after I gave it up, I started to get this asthma, all this problem with my chest. It was like, God, I've given up smoking and I'm having all this trouble. Well, apparently this can be quite normal and it can take 10 years to repair. And as you get older, it takes longer and depends on how much you smoked. So I've given it up, made a good effort, and then I have to share a building, not a, my home, but the building, divided into lots of flats where people, most people in there smoke, unfortunately. And our hallway acts like a chimney. And, uh, and the smoke just disperses amongst the flats. Now the smokers don't care. We are trying to impress on them to stop smoking skunk and pot in the house. That's a, hard, that's a hard thing. So sometimes it's not my own fault when I've had, well, my chest is bad. Because I'm having to cope with other people's smoke. It's not good because people die from passive smoking. But I do like to get out, exercise my lungs. I'm really hoping this isn't a relapse with the breathing. Um, hope not. Anyway, what a lovely scene. I'm going to turn off and take a picture.